Santa Clara County is introducing the King Vision video laryngoscope. This will become the frontline method for intubation and direct laryngoscopy in our EMS system. The King Vision video laryngoscope consists of three components. The first is the monitor. This is non disposable and powered by three AAA batteries. There is a power switch located on the back of the monitor. The second is the adapter. This contains the fiber optics and is non disposable. The adapter slips over the monitor and locks into position. The third is the channeled blade. This is disposable and slips over the adapter. The channeled blade is the only approved version that may be used in Santa Clara County. Here is a short video to better orient you to the King Vision video laryngoscope. In talking about the fundamental operation of the King Vision video laryngoscope, it's important to remember that because the imaging sensor is in the blade, uh, you will not get an image on the display unless the two are connected before you power up. Now what happens is that if you power up without the blade, you're not going to get an image. If you then attach the blade after the fact, you'll get a split image. So if, to, to correct that, you just power off and back on again. Now if uh, you disturb this connection after it's uh, been attached, then one of two things will happen. Uh, it will either provide a uh, frozen image or the screen could go blank like that. So it's important to, to hold this in a way to avoid lifting on the display and disturbing this connection in use. There are several things to remember prior to use of the video laryngoscope. First, only the channel blade is approved for use in Santa Clara County. The ET tube shall always be preloaded into the channeled blade. Make sure the end of the ET tube does not stick out past the tip of the blade. Doing so will change the trajectory of the ET tube. The King Vision will be loaded with the ET tube and bougie prior to any intubation attempt. Here is a video to properly demonstrate the use of the King Vision video laryngoscope. There are two blades that come with the King Vision system. There is a channeled blade and a non-channeled blade. If you can see the channel running right here, this is the channeled blade. Now we use this blade exclusively. We don't use the non-channeled blade and my tip is to always use the channeled blade. Now the reason for that is this is also a hyper-acute blade. Both of the King Vision blades are hyper-acute and what that means is this uses a non-displacing technology. For example, it goes in and wraps around the airway structures, the mandible and the tongue, and has a camera at the end to give you a great view of the epiglottis and the vocal glottic opening. As opposed to direct laryngoscopy, which is a displacing technology, where you have to lift up and away and move those structures out of the way. The benefit of using a hyperacute or non-displacing blade is that you can get almost always get a really good view of the glottic structures. The problem is that because it is no longer a line of sight intubation, you can't always get the tube to go where you want it to. That's where the tube comes in. With some of these devices, with the non-channel blade, you have to use a rigid stylet. The channel allows you to avoid doing that. So we always use the channel blade and that's my tip. The next thing that I recommend is how to hold the device itself. The King Vision has a very nice handle on it. The problem is that it's a very nice handle and encourages people to hold it here. So even though this is a great handle, if you hold the device up here, one of the things we learn from trial and error is that you're very prone to inserting the blade too deeply. My recommendation is that you hold it very low on the blade. Now this does a couple of things. One, it removes your desire to use this as a tool that you have to use a lot of strength for. So you don't have a lot of leverage on the blade if you hold it low, and it turns out that's a good thing. This is not a device that you need to use a lot of strength with. This is not a brute force device. Video laryngoscopy, and actually direct laryngoscopy for that point, uh, really should be something you do use with finesse. So hold it low and light. I mentioned that this is a non-displacing blade. So 
try to overcome your desire to use it as direct laryngoscopy or as a displacing technology. If you grab the device, go in and try to lift up and out like you would with DL, you're going to decrease the size or the, the quality of the view that you get. Um, plus you put an awful lot of pressure on the end of the blade um, and the blade is just not designed for that. So low and light and remember that the tip is wrapping around the tongue not lifting the tongue out of the way. With DL we spend a lot of time talking about inserting the blade off to the side and sweeping the tongue out of the way. With VL you're using a wider blade, insert the blade to the midline. Next, because one of the difficulties with video laryngoscopy since your eyeball is essentially down here, is that if the patient has a spooged airway, if there's vomit or blood or whatever else they might have in there, and you just insert your uh, camera right into the muck, you can foul your view, have to come out and start from scratch. So it's best to try to avoid that. So my recommendation is you put the blade in just a little, just put the tip in, keep it in midline, and then once you can see what's in the airway, gradually walk your way down the surface of the tongue until you get into the vollecula. So what you're trying to avoid is blindly putting the tip of the device into the vomit, and you're also trying to avoid the dependent surfaces in the airway where the mucus and blood and beer is going to go. So that stuff is going to fall down to the posterior surface of the airway. You want to make sure your camera stays anteriorly. So start with a midline insertion and what you want to do is just walk down the, the tongue. Well let's say that for whatever reason the tube wasn't going in. The next tip is to rotate the tube a little bit and have it pass. But if that doesn't work, use your bougie. Advance the bougie in, rotate your tube. See, that's where I needed to rotate the tube. Advance the bougie in, and then advance the ET tube over the bougie. A couple of troubleshooting things that are useful. We hear a lot, or we used to hear a lot before we really implemented some of these steps, is I got a great view of the cords, but I couldn't get the tube to pass. The reason for that is almost universally you're too deep. And that's one of the reasons that we say hold the tube or hold the blade low and light. So if you go in too deep, you're not likely to be able to see the epiglottis. You may have what looks like an incredible view of the cords, but if you can't see that epiglottis, the odds are that you're at the wrong angle and your tube is going to go straight into the esophagus. So if you get to a point where you say this is a great view, but the tube is just not curving up, remind yourself that you're too deep, you don't have the view, back up a little bit. So I just heard um, someone on a podcast with Gene, as a matter of fact, say that a perfect DL view really gives you poor intubating conditions with VL. So if you see that perfect view without the epiglottis, you're probably too deep, back up a little bit. The next thing I want to point out is if you have any problems with the device at all, if you have a great view or you're getting a good camera image, if the camera comes loose, your image is going to freeze in place. The key solution to that is reset the camera or the head onto the blade and then reboot. Turn the camera on or off and then back on and you're good to go. So let me just kind of go back over those. Number one is use their channeled blade. Number two, treat every intubation as though it's going to be a difficult intubation. Preload your tube, preload your bougie. Hold the blade low and light. Do not try to use the King Vision as a direct laryngoscope. Um, don't try to lift up and out. Remember it's designed to rotate around the structures, not lift the structures. Start with a midline insertion, put just the tip of the blade into the oropharynx so that you can see what kind of muck is lying in wait for you down in the oropharynx. Then walk the tip of the blade down and around the tongue, keeping the tip of the blade out of the posterior pharynx where that muck is. Suction early, often, and continuously. Make sure the tip of the suction catheter is distal or is always in view of the uh, camera 
because that way you know that it's distal to the camera. If there is a continuous source of fluid or muck, make sure that you just hub your suction catheter deep into the esophagus or deep into the oropharynx so that you're acting like an OG tube. Make sure that you get the view, and what I mean by that is make sure you have a great view of the epiglottis. I would recommend you don't try to pass the tube if you can't see that epiglottis, if you can't see that view. If the tube is going off to the side, rotate the tube a little bit to pass it through the cords. Remind yourself if you're getting a great view of the cords but the tube won't pass, you're probably too deep. Back up a little bit. Remember that you can, if you can't get the entire device into the oropharynx to make that turn, decapitate it, put the blade in, recapitate it, and if you ever have a problem with the view on the camera, reboot it. Turn it off, reset it, turn it back on. To review, only the channeled blade is approved for use in Santa Clara County. The King Vision will be loaded with the ET tube and bougie prior to any intubation attempt. Although not required, it is highly recommended that you hold the King Vision lower than the handle as illustrated in the video. This will greatly decrease the chances of over manipulation and placing the King Vision too deep. Think of the bougie as your plan B. If for some reason the ET tube cannot be directly placed, do not panic. Deploy the bougie and have it guide the ET tube into position. Since CPR will not be interrupted during intubation, there is less emphasis on periods of no ventilations. Move away from the old adage of you have 30 seconds to intubate. You have more time than you think. If there is any trouble with placing the ET tube, keep calm. Attempt to twist the ET tube into place or utilize the loaded bougie to assist with the placement. Santa Clara County paramedics will now have the choice to use a traditional laryngoscope or the King Vision to perform intubation. Please note that the King Vision is the suggested choice. Remember, the bougie must be loaded into the ET tube when used with the King Vision. It, however, only has to be utilized if the provider cannot place the ET tube in the trachea. The bougie is still required if intubating with the traditional laryngoscope. All other criteria stated in the protocol will still apply. Should you have any questions, please feel free to contact the Santa Clara County EMS Agency at the email address listed here.